Welcome to episode 310 of the Game Deflators podcast. My name's John, and I'm joined by Ryan. Hey, everybody here at the Game Deflators podcast. We like to talk about games. We've recently picked up games we're currently playing, and we can dig it in this week's Inflation Deflation Challenge. So we played some Dig Dug 2, which is uh, Trouble in Paradise on the NES. Not, and I've got Not Electric Boogaloo. Not Electric Boogaloo. And then when you said, can you dig it? I was like, whoa, hold on. That could be like Booker T in old school WWE. Oh, so there's no, a lot of the Warriors. There's a Warriors reference. There's a lot of dig it everywhere, man. Uh, but this you week is the Warriors dug. for PS2. You should play that. Uh, I don't think I do. And I know it's kind of pricey now. So I'm hoping for a reprint one day or like a remake, a remaster, That'd be a sick. remaster, a remake. That'd be pretty cool, I think. All right. Well, uh, Ryan, so. <laughs> What are we going to be talking about today? So uh, this week we are going to chat about spooky movies to suit the season. Uh, then a real treat for the EGM Kickstarter project. And Sony gets stopped pulling a trick in court. And then we're going to wrap everything up with that look at Dig Dug 2. And before we start our episode here with our recent pickups and such, you can find us on thegamedeflators.com, our currently out of date website, because I did complete a video game. And I didn't even like list it on our website, which kind of sucks. Uh, so you can find us there. You can also find us on social media at Game Deflators on X, at The Game Deflators on Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. We are also on YouTube. So if you're watching right now, ring the little bell so you know when we're on. Subscribe, comment, all that good stuff that comes with it. And if you're listening, well, that means you're not watching. So go ahead and like the episode on the podcast app you're listening to us on. Leave us a five star review, a comment, a subscribe, all of that too. We definitely appreciate it. All right, let's go into recent pickups. So my pickup, another hard drive. Picked up a uh, Western Digital Black one terabyte NVMe. It was like $62, I think, or $70 on Amazon the other day. So why not? So my plan is to take my existing hard drive and SSD that I have, and then uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clone that to the NVMe terabyte because my SSD right now is a 500 gig. So I'll clone my OS, all my existing software. So we got a fresh new hard drive sitting in there that's faster. And then at some point I will upgrade the old SSD to like a four terabyte, eight terabyte, something along those lines, slap that in there. So I've got a nice eight terabyte SSD for my gaming purposes. Obviously this is a gaming hard drive as well, but I really don't want to, you know, put my OS and all that and my games on that. I'd kind of like that stay separate. And then down the road, I do intend on buying a Western Digital Red drive, which will be probably 12 to 16 terabytes. Apparently, Black Friday, they tend to go on sale uh, for a really good price point. So I'll look to buy one of those. And that'll house even more files for Game Deflators content that we have. Because wow. I'm running out of space, dude. Even though I got that 8 terabyte drive, like I, I need to make sure I have all the space. And then it's more like redundancy, too. Yeah, so, if something happens, you want an extra backup. Yeah, and that's essentially it. So like I'll have all of these files on like the eight terabyte and then I'll also have them on that red or yeah, the eight terabyte. As, yeah, and then the red 12 or 16 terabyte when that's ready and we'll be set in, in that capacity. So that'll be fun. Uh, also picked up a copy and this is a printed out case for my disc only of Echo Night Beyond, which will be coming in. So in terms of spooky month, there you go. We got that. Um. What else did I pick up? Picked up magic cards as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, you're making some new goblin deck to piss people off, right? <laughs> no, no, I was uh no, it's not a goblin deck to piss people off. It's a red green deck to piss people off. Uh so this deck, let me see, I'll just grab a couple of these cards. I ended up grabbing, let's see, a Bloomboro Heartfire Hero. I think we already had that one picked up recently. Um, manifold mouse turn inside out which is apparently a pretty good card but the big one is this like ley line of resonance oh yeah those are supposed to be pretty powerful those ley line cards yeah it says like if it's in your hand of course put it into the battlefield uh, without paying a mana cost but it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only a single creature you control copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy so i've got cards in here that say like okay give x creature like plus three plus zero or yeah. like plus two plus one uh, and then also adds like, like the monster's rage, for example, gives a whole bunch of bonuses. Plus it gives you like that token that deals damage. So the idea is there is a mouse card that when it is targeted, it gets like a bonus. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and then uh, there's another card that allows you to like sacrifice it. So essentially what you're doing is you're striking with this one mouse card, doubling up your damage. So it's dealing however much damage and then you're sacking it and then you're blowing it up completely in your face. So it's you're essentially looking at, you know, it could be 15, 20 damage from my understanding, depending on how you play your cards, right? Pun intended. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what I've got going on, and um, I'm looking to piss people off. And then I'm not going to talk about it this week, but I do have a big heavy hitter reserve list card that I picked up at a very good price point. So I'll talk about that next week if it comes in the mail by then. Uh, okay. But I went through my whole route of calling up a store in advance. Hey, what's the condition on your damaged card because we all know if you got a crap ton of sales and you have a damaged card it's likely okay right so they verified condition i was like okay cool we're all set so i had a combination of credit card reward points and store credit from tcg threw it out all together and then i'll get some other money in from something else that i sell and that'll pay it off so i'm, I'm pretty excited about that but it's a it's a big one so yeah and then um as far as what i'm currently playing so I am going to move back into uh, AM2R here this week. So I was, like I said, probably about an hour into the game uh, last time we talked about it. So the game, I like it so far. It really does kind of remind me of Super Metroid, and I really enjoyed Super Metroid. So looking forward to continuing this one. And then the other game was Shin Chan. So I I've think seen I all those postings. Yeah, so that's on our YouTube. You can check out the gameplay there. I've got... 10 videos i was kind of upset because i on video nine i was falling asleep and i was like all right i gotta cut it off right like i know i have another day in the game because there's 19 days total for the game before you start new game plus and i said all right i'll cut it off i'll have tomorrow that'll be like a good 20 30 minutes of content <laughs> no i literally like kicked on the game i was like okay i told my wife i gotta finish it up for the podcast so i hit record it goes through whatever bit and then roll credits <laughs> so the last video is essentially end credits um, outside of the little completion of the story that's tied mm -hmm. in. So I liked it, dude. It was a fun game. And then it turns out the sequel comes out. I think it's in four days. Oh, the wow. Sequel comes out. Yeah. So I got to see if it's going to get released on to uh, PS4 or PS5. I'd really like to play it on there and record the content. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, super relaxing game, hence why I fell asleep multiple times. But it takes place over the course of a 19 day period of Shin uh, going into some small Japanese town and for summer vacation. And it turns out like all of the people in this town, like all of his little friends are the friends that he has back home. So Masa and, all, and I think Boo is the other one that has like the boogers always dripping. So all of his like normal friends are there. And they have like the same names, but they don't know Shin. And so as you kind of progress through the game, you learn that like it's They're like alternate... the Bizarros. Well, it's an alternate world, essentially, because this professor that's there is using his imagination, his time machine to pull dinosaurs out from like this storybook and memory of his to be able to bring them into that world. And his plan is to conquer the world. And he's starting with this small Japanese town, of course, just like Hogwarts, you know, like I'm going to take over the wizarding world, but let me take over to high school first. Well, his idea is small Japanese town of a population of, I don't know, 20. And for some strange reason, they have all of these things there for a small population of people. I have no idea. <laughs> um, but really what it kind of comes down to is uh, Shin finds out that he's been summoning these dinosaurs in. And professor's like, okay, well, now that you know, I'm going to reset the week and nobody's going to believe you because you're a five-year-old. <laughs> and so the whole time he's trying to like accomplish, like telling all these people what's happening. And uh, the ultimate goal, mind you, is to go on a date with like an 18-year-old girl. <laughs> of and, course. Of course. Like that's Shin Chan. So it's, it's a fun game, dude. Like you're catching bugs and catching fish and running around. You have like these dinosaur battles of rock, paper, scissors. So as the dinosaurs continue to come through, you have like these imagination dinosaur tournaments where like there's these big dinosaurs walking the streets, but you go into like this basement area with this cardboard table and you have imaginary dinosaur battles with rock paper. It's basically rock, paper, scissors. And all the dinosaurs have like their abilities and things. So it's pretty cool. And so you just kind of go through. Uh, that's one of the objectives you have to win however many dinosaur battles with X dinosaurs. You get to name the dinosaurs. So I think the Tyrannosaurus Rex, I named Tyrannope. 
was the name of it. And then there was like a super spiny guy was the other one. Like it's it's quirky. It's fun, dude. It's Shin Shan. I had a good time. I enjoyed it. I'd highly recommend it to anybody just looking for a nice, fun, casual game to sit back and relax like that did it for me for sure. Cool. So, yeah, for me, like, honestly, dude, like eight out of ten for sure. <laughs> like it was good. All right. On to you, sir. All right. I, I do have something that I picked up. I forgot about. It's right here. Oh, OK. Ryan's gone. I ordered this box to hold my oh, one piece cards. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, it is, except for it's too it's too small. It's way smaller than what I thought it was gonna be. Why don't you put the cards so sideways? Like, well, that's the thing, like they don't really fit uh, with like, sleeves on. You can't fit them vertically. Oh, in damn, the box. They're too tall. No, so no, you no, can no. only go. Oh. Like no, sideways with them. Yeah, that's basically. how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, it's just it's not as much storage as I thought it was gonna be. Hmm. So I was just a little bit disappointed, and I didn't really read the reviews because in the comments somebody said that the size was misleading as well. So always read your comments. Also, this was one of those things that took like I ordered it and it took like two weeks to get here for some reason even though it's just like a cardboard box. Did it so. ship flat and you had to build it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, it's a one piece box. Still cool. Did you yeah, see they're going cool. on hiatus, by the way, on the anime? Oh, yeah. And they're releasing a remastered Fishman Island arc instead. I was like, nobody asked for that, but OK. No, but I mean, if you're if there was one that needed some love, that would have been it, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess. It was probably it's one of my, my least favorite arc anyways that I've, oh, really? I've gotten through. I still hate Tremor Bark. Yeah, I don't know why you don't like Thriller Bark. Or Thriller Bark, yeah. i not a fan of it. See, yeah. I don't even know the name of it. Like, that's how much I hate exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. I think yeah. this happened last time we brought it up, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you remember when we were at that card shop and we were talking about One Piece and I mentioned how much I hate the arc and this guy just, like, stops, yeah. puts down his cards and looks back and he's like, you what? <laughs> yeah i know i want to get some more cards like i found a few more packs out in the wild like usually if i see them i only grab like a couple because i'm not trying to go hard and i don't really think i have terrible uh pack luck i never get great rares in packs for anything like john's always sitting yeah. next to me at the draft table pulling the chase card that's not true. Get nothing. I feel like more often than not, you're getting way better like mythics and stuff. And I'm always like, great. Here's three blues. I'm never going to play. I'll have, you know, that's probably good karma for me only because for years I pulled garbage yeah. out of packs years. I always pulled garbage. So yeah, I've pulled like three shields in the last year. So <laughs> I've been pretty lucky. Yeah, there's um, let's see here. What else did I do this week? I downloaded some games. Uh, not really purchased, but there was some good things on Game Pass. So I got Inscription, which is a game that I've always wanted to play. That is like a card game, but also has like this kind of like escape room kind of element where it's like you're in this creepy cabin with this creepy dealer and you have to like beat the dealer and like find out the mystery and try to like escape or something. Uh, people were raving about that when that came out. Uh, Mech Warrior 5 Clans. I played a bunch of Mech Warrior 2, I think it was, on my PC when I was a kid. It was like one of the only games that I had, and it worked pretty good on our home PC. So uh, I thought it might be fun to check that out. I also downloaded Costume Quest 2. I've huh. never played any of the Costume Quest games, um, but it is spooky season. I've been trying to indulge myself in the season as much as I can in my evenings so um that is something that i've always wanted to check out and then i also downloaded the demo for metaphor refantazio uh because i'm never gonna finish that game because i can't finish any persona game so i might as well just download the demo and have some fun with that and then no pressure <laughs> there you go that works out you know i'm looking yeah. at the outline here for what you're currently playing and there's a certain game that's still missing yeah, I know. Um, uh, it's uh, it's too spooky right now. As soon as the spookiness is done, it's y'all have all of November and December, John. It'll get done. 
It'll get um, done. It always, it almost always gets done. Um, so for those watching and listening, uh, feel free to start putting in recommendations for punishment video games that he would have to play in the event <laughs> that he does not complete it. Just let's yeah. start the process now. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself all wound up for it. Yeah. Um, so this week I've been, like I said, I've been not really playing any games. I've been watching some like spooky stuff and doing uh, some of that. I've also started working on some of my models again. I've been working on this War Greymon model, oh, which is cool. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I've never done a, a Digimon model before. Usually I do the Gundams. You can probably see a bunch of those kind of like littered around here. Did you ever build that blue one I got you? Uh, no, that one's in there. Uh, I was already kind of mid build on my first master grade Gundam hmm. and that one's a master grade too. That one is like, it's a lot more involved than a lot of the Gundams that I had done previously. That's and I got to that one. Yeah. With doing the hobby, like it, it's kind of like, you know, when you were painting miniatures and you were getting started, like as you get better and as you kind of up your tool set, it kind of increases the load on the process. So now I've got like nice file, like glass files. And I've got, you know, for the Gundams, I've got a bunch of like um, liner and stuff. So trying to do like panel lining and all this, it, it adds a bunch of time. And sometimes it gets in my way because it's like, oh, man, I really just want to like sit down and piece something together. Yeah, I don't really want to have to sit down. And it's like a week's long project to get anything done so i've been like i've been trying to hit this uh war graymon hard to kind of get back into it because i do have i've got one in progress and then i've got four other models in my closet still so i try not to let them stack up too high like <laughs> i don't want more than five things staring me in the face unfinished at a time if i can help it nice well i mean you're better at it than I am, dude. I, I have not been able to actually put together a good model for many, many years. I'm sure if I put some practice into it, I could, but I also don't have the patience for it. So I'm yeah. one that I would more than likely snap some of those small pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's not worth it for me to get angry over. I've been really wanting to get the Lego Nightmare Before Christmas set, but it's been on like back order. And every time I call the Lego store, they're sold out. And it's just like, ah, yeah, want it. Yeah, that one looks pretty cool. I actually think that's cool. I need, I still need to buy the uh, Rivendell set. Yeah. Yeah. I saw today they had the, uh, or a couple days ago, I guess, the X Mansion yeah, set. Yeah. I saw that too. And that looked pretty cool. And then I saw that like pack in bonus that you get if you buy it is like, uh, it's uh, Professor X in like the Cerebro chamber little figure. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. I it's want probably just gonna that. It's going to be sold out so quickly and then you'll yeah so, yeah and then you'll go online and yeah it won't be worth it but you could technically look at mock sets yeah that, that one whole, like you got for that yeah that just like okay cool like we're going to piece together all the prior lego parts that are out there and then if there's something because some sets have like an exclusive piece that you can't get outside of that right like you mm -hmm. have to technically buy that set to do that um you could theoretically like depending on what that exclusive piece is, like you could probably find something super close. So for me of the mimics, the eyes were exclusive to the mimic, but there were other eyes that Lego had made and there was yeah. like probably six or seven to choose from. And I just found the one I liked the most, which mm -hmm. actually looked better than what they were giving. And then you kind of have something that stands out. Like that's one thing about um, models. That's always fun is to like make it your own or like kit bash or there's so much like customization in Gunpla that I've not even ever like delved into like doing your own like lining and things where you're creating new panels mm -hmm. and like doing like a bunch of extra stickers and things like that's all next level stuff and then you yeah. get into people who are like painting it's like oh oh yeah that's difficult special models by the way i'm noticing now did i ever share this like with you or on the podcast this deck box i had uh is it the wood one yeah i don't think i ever shared it on the podcast like mm -mm. I'm just looking at it like Scott, this like accordion style. Yeah, I love that. Done. How they make the wood bendable and pliable yeah. with the cuts. And then my wife knows I like blue black, so it's got the blue black burned in, and then it's got a Shiok on. Oh, nice. This side. Yeah, the I, maybe Weaver. I haven't seen that. Maybe I've only seen that type of box somewhere else. But yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So Very cool. Yeah. Pretty. Is cool. that one you've had for a while? Yeah, I've had this since. Maybe I Father's have seen Day. it and it just doesn't stand out to me. Well, because I've had it in the I've had it on the shelf, so mm-hmm. you might not have noticed it. Yeah. And we don't really record in there. Yeah. Well, no, we don't record in here anymore because we're virtual. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh jump into our topic this week. Uh, you've been yeah. getting spooky, I guess, with some movies, and you're like, "Hey, let's talk horror movies." So yeah, lay it so, out. Let's let's talk horror. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching a whole bunch of stuff this year. I was never really into horror movies as a kid, and I'm still not like a huge fan. I like a good scary movie or a good monster movie, but I definitely don't do like body horror or like you know, torture porn movies, like all that kind of stuff is like, that's all way too much for me. But um, we're we're about to start trending on some threads that we didn't mean to. (laughs) We just saw this one last week, Daddy's Head, which was pretty interesting. It's like an alien. um, So it's not a porno. No, it's like an alien that can uh, mimic. And there's this kid who lost his dad and he's with his stepmom and they live in this big fancy house because the dad was an architect like in the middle of the woods and his ex-best friend keeps like checking in on her and there's this like alien imitating the dad like trying to influence the son and it was very um it was very good they did a pretty good job of doing a lot of not really showing you too much so as to not make it you know sometimes you show too much and it gives it away like signs is a great movie up until you see that like 3d like alien that looks straight out of like reboot in the middle of the living room (laughs) at least that's what my memory remembers um so that was that was pretty good um some other things that we've been watching we watched the thing the 2011 one I've never seen the original one. So I was actually surprised to find that this one is actually like a prequel and Hmm. not a remake of it. So you can actually finish that one and then pick up the original thing kind of like right where this one leaves off. So I'm excited to go back. Is it Antarctica or is it Alaska? Okay, it's Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah. And then um, me and my wife, we actually got another model that's like one of those kind of little rooms um hmm, not yep. quite a book nook but like a little we have one right there yeah i've got that we've one. got a couple in our house so those are fun to do and we got like a little witch shop so we were doing that the other night and we put on vampire hunter d bloodlust it's nice. a gorgeous gorgeous anime um if you've ever seen it before or i guess if you haven't seen it before i i don't really know a good place to recommend watching it (laughs) we had to just like find some streaming site and like cast it from our phone because it's not really available anywhere but um that's a good one it's got like i said amazing animation um it's like futuristic vampires uh have taken over the world but have kind of been in decay for a long time and the world's kind of like a lonely dying place and vampire hunter d is like the main character it's a series of novels actually and there's like several adaptations of them into different animated uh movies or ovas or whatever this is the only one i've ever seen i like that yeah let me see oh dude you could have borrowed that from me i have the dvd oh you do okay yeah i've got the original dvd on that um i've actually got a lot of good like old school anime on dvd because and i I bought them years ago Mm -hmm. mainly because at the time there wasn't streaming services but yeah um you kind of had to buy it well yeah back then i had to right but i bought a lot of these like i've got blood the last vampire is another one that i've got that's a great uh, one Oh, yeah, that's a fantastic one. I have the anime series for that Blood Plus, but the movie is so much better. I don't know if I I think I've seen the series or maybe I have the series on DVD. I'm not sure. But another one just on the topic of vampires is uh, Shiki. It's another pretty good. I haven't seen that one. Shiki. So look up Shiki. It's one season. It's a horror anime series. I think it's like I want to say it's like less than 20 episodes. 
Um, but it's a good one. It came out in 2010 and it's solid. Like okay. a whole town pretty much turning into vampires. Um, and I, I don't know if it's necessarily like a spooky, like super spooky type of thing, like, you know, jump scares and stuff. But it, it was a pretty good story as far as I recall. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed that one as well. Yeah, we've been watching um, School Live or School Live, I guess, mm-hmm. I think is mm-hmm. what it is. And that's one of those where it looks like it's just a, a show about cute do- cute girls doing cute things. Uh, but in reality, it's like a zombie apocalypse and these girls are all trapped in the school. Uh, it's got a pretty, pretty good first episode and it's got some brutal scenes in some of the later episodes. But uh, that one's been pretty interesting. It's got that kind of dichotomy. Like if you've ever seen Madoka Magica, it's right in that kind of vein. Gotcha. And then the favorite thing that I've been watching, and I've been sending this to everybody, J Bucks Retro Rewind on YouTube. Uh, This guy has what appear to be probably like old VHS recordings of like TV blocks for old commercials from the 90s and maybe like early 2000s. But recently he's uploaded or I guess I don't really know how recently it seems recent to me because I just found it, (laughs) but they're like Halloween blocks of like Fox morning block and like Disney morning block and Nick morning blocks and stuff with all of like the commercial breaks and like call in games. And oh, it's so much great nostalgia. If you were around from that era to see some of these things again, that like I've completely forgot about, some of these like old cereal commercials and like what the McDonald's toys were. Oh, I've God. seen commercials for like the premiere of Pokemon, the first movie and Anastasia in <laughs> theaters. Nice. Yeah, so, I uh, I saw you sent the link yet. I haven't seen it yet, uh, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. That does sound like it's a great way fun. to spend your Saturday morning. If you're just kind yeah. of like in bed and you've got a TV in your room, throw that on. That'll bring you right back. Yep, that'd be one to look at. Um. I guess for me, I haven't, you know, I I don't really, I guess I do watch TV, but a lot of it's like, you know, not going to fall into the category of spooky. Yeah, I do watch a lot of sports. Uh, I started watching a Daryl Dixon spinoff show for Walking Dead recently. I don't know how, but he's ended up in France for six episodes. How how Um, do you fly to France in the post-apocalypse? I I don't know how he got to France. He, they they open up the episode with him like strapped onto a boat like a small like wooden boat i'm like how how would you have it doesn't make any sense i'm assuming the story that will kind of tell more right as it progresses but the one thing that's pretty cool about this is they're uh they're zombies or walkers i guess if you want to call them or crawlers in this series uh they have like the ability like if they touch your arm it's like an acid burn oh what yeah i know and they call them I these think they call french them, like, zombies <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't know. It's so weird. And then he like in the first episode, he um he comes across like I've only seen like half the first episode so far, but he comes across this lady, which you would think Daryl is smart enough to not like approach a lady who's happened to be cooking in like the center area. And this old man who says he's blind, like Daryl should know better, right? Than the yeah interact with these people. But he does anyways, right? Because they're French. They're nice. They're they're comrades from World War Two, apparently. Well, yeah. So he basically gets robbed and uh, knocked unconscious and such and then he ends up in a covenant with nuns who have been like harvesting food and you know surviving the entire apocalypse in their covenant with kids as well so it's uh it's interesting uh so far i think i'll continue watching it considering it's a short series um like i said it's only six episodes from what i saw on netflix maybe it's more and that's just kind of like a pilot season i don't know but uh, it did kind of pique my interest a little bit of time I spent watching it. So that's, uh, I guess that's my contribution to Spooky Month so far. Yeah. yeah. What are, uh, like, are there any movies that you watch every year? For Halloween? Um, yeah. Mm, not really. Uh, my wife is bigger into Halloween than I am. But mm. I do watch horror movies on occasion. So I think... One that I always enjoyed was like Freddy versus Jason. Okay. I don't know why. Like, it's just such a terrible movie, but just something campier. Just, yeah. Just like the whole idea of like Freddy and Jason fighting. Um, So, yeah, I always enjoyed that one. 
Uh, I did enjoy the Freddy Krueger movies a lot when I was younger. Uh, that's what I would. That was kind of my go to uh, that and Jason movies. So those are always big. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not like. Uh, Halloween for me is more like pumpkin pie candy. You know, it's it's less on like the spooky side of things. And now gotcha. I have a kid. It's and now I have a kid. It's going to be a little different. Right. So our Halloween movies are going to be like the great pumpkin and Charlie Brown and stuff I like, like that. I like fun Halloween. Like I've got my like little ghost here and yeah. I've got my nightmare before Christmas book here. Like I like festive Halloween as much yeah. or more probably way more probably than actually like real spooky. Like we always well, love watching like the Halloween town movies and some of like the old like decoms like um, Phantom of the Megaplex and mom's dating a vampire and stuff like that. Those are great. Well, and you've seen our house. I mean, we have Halloween yeah. decorations outside. We've got the inflatables and lights and all that stuff. And then inside, we've got more decorations that we've well, and so your wife's such a potter head that, you know, like that suffices for both Halloween and Christmas simultaneously. Oh, yeah. We still haven't set up the uh, the castle and everything for our little like Halloween village. We just mm -hmm. we've been so busy. But the You're idea busy. is like, yeah, November, once we start doing Christmas, like I've already got the castle built. That's the the worst part to build. Yeah, it's you got it in that case now. Yeah, exactly. So whenever we need it, just pull it out of case, set it up and then bring it on back into the case when the season's done. So, um, yeah, that's that's really kind of our mojo when it comes to like halloween but we will you know we'll watch horror movies from time to time i did see what's that one terrifier i think with a clown like oh no that's too much <laughs> yeah see i i've never seen those and i've heard like there's people puking in the theater from that like that sounds like a good time just sit uh, back and watch much. that uh, I don't, dude it's it's one of those things like if i see fake gore i have no problem watching that i'm like yeah. oh god it's gross it's when i'm like it's it's kind of weird, right? With horror movies, I can watch all the nasty, like crazy gore that happens in those films, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, things of that nature. But if you get me on like a doctor show where like slowly, oh, yeah. thing, I'm like, oh, I can't watch that. It's yeah. too much blood. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have to check out Terrifier at some point and see like how gross this actually is. So the, I don't know, somebody comments on that if you've seen it or not, if if it's uh, worth messing with or not. Yeah, I wanted to give like a couple recommendations for good spooky movies. So um, Barbarian is probably my favorite horror movie like ever. Um, I think that that's just amazing and definitely worth a watch. Um, the Wailing is a really good uh, Korean horror movie. It's a little long. Got to read subtitles, but that is also a very creepy, good horror movie. And lastly, uh, one that we watched, I think it was earlier this year or it might have been last year. Talk to me. Um, hmm. That was kind of a low budget. I think it was an Australian film. Um, or it might have been New Zealand. I don't know. Ben would be mad at me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, Aust it's Australia. Just say it's Australia. And then when it, he hears this at some point, he'll be angry anyways. Right. Uh, that one was really good, too. So those are three that I would recommend out if you're trying to set the vibes. I mean, if I had to go to, uh, it'd probably be The Ring. That one mm. always scared the hell out of me. Just anytime I hear static on a TV, I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> like, I that the off. name I forget the name of her, but like just the whole crawling out of a TV component. And I don't know if I mentioned a story here. Um, I probably mentioned to you a prank that uh, Justin and I had pulled on my brother when we were younger. I want to say we were probably Justin and I were probably early teenagers. My brother probably 10 or 11 at the time, but he had seen the ring, um, you know, TV static and all that stuff and scary movie. And so my brother was out with my mom at some point. And so Justin and I went into his room because we knew when he got home, he was going to hang off us, play video games all night. And when he was sleepy, he'd just go back to his room, go to sleep. So while he was out, we set his TV in there to full volume static. And then we turn off the TV, test it again. OK, cool. It's going to open on static. No problem. Um, the room that he stays in has like it was an old dining room. So they converted and had like three doors on it. But the doors my family got were like glass panel doors. Right. Mm. So we test them. We're like, okay, if there, cause he had curtains for privacy in there. So we're like, okay, if we move the curtain, can we hit the TV with the signal from here and turn it on? Oh. And we're like, okay, cool. So then we wired, like we took some thread and we essentially like 
on one of the curtains, we took a little thread from the bottom and then we got it to where we could shift it and just uh -huh. get like the perfect amount. So like it didn't move enough, just subtly. And then we could go ahead and turn on TV. And my brother always locked the doors as well. So uh, we, of course, hid the remote in like one of the couch cushions out in the living room. He goes to bed. Justin and I just kind of wait a moment and we had like a map drawn out. It was great, like of how it was all going to work, where we needed to go, where stuff was set up. And so we, of course, do our thing. We move the curtain and we pop on the TV and we both bolt to the room. And my brother, at some point, we just hear the door fling open and he goes running down the hallway and he jumps into my parents' bed, freaking out because his TV turned on. <laughs> we're sitting. Um, we're, it, it was like one of the first times Justin stayed at my house. So we're sitting. Uh, so actually, no, we were like 10 and he was eight. I think about it. And oh, so wow. we're sitting in the bed like just we could not contain our laughter. And my dad just starts yelling like Justin's never coming over to stay at the house ever again. And he was living there. <laughs> when yeah. We were in college. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, 20 years later. Um, so, yeah, it was always such a good time. That's fun. So, yep. Tricks right, and man. treats. Tricks and treats. That was definitely a trick. And I will never forget that one. <laughs> All right. So let's go into some articles. Uh, the first one I've got here is Electronic Gaming Monthly blows through a Kickstarter funding goal. Uh, and this is through Gamer Rant. So basically what Electronic Gaming Monthly has done is set up a Kickstarter that was at $35,000. Uh, and the idea was to create a hardcover compendium of just all the cool things of you know, electronic gaming monthly, or we'll just say EGM moving forward. Um, so it's got like uh, little bits of articles in there, pictures, like lots of the history of EGM. And so I thought it was pretty cool, right? Like at first I was like, are they trying to like reboot or something? When I first saw the article, it's like, actually, no, that's a pretty cool, like, you know, coffee table piece or something to have mm -hmm. in a home library set up if you got one. It's so a good it's bookend. Something. Like if you've yeah. been collecting EGM, put this at the end of that bookshelf to to capstone it off. Or, you know, if you've been a reader passively your whole life, like now that it's, you know, not around anymore, this kind of gives you that go back without having to hoard hundreds of magazines. Yeah. And like we've got, well, I mean, you, you, might want to hoard magazines depending on, you know, how you utilize them. But, um, you know, like we have Darren, he's got the 32 bit library books uh, that we've got. Uh, also, Brian Rigsby with Retro Game Books. Uh, he's got all of his coffee table style books. We have the Super Nintendo one that we're actually in, uh, which is kind of cool. So pick up your copy today. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's very it's, cool. Yeah, it is really cool. It's just a whole bunch of like Super Nintendo maps. It's part of like a three part series. I think he's doing Super Nintendo N64 and there's one other, if I recall. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, they're these types of books are really cool. I like things like this where you just kind of browse through, take a quick look, read a couple small pieces. You don't have to go in depth and, it, you know, it's just open it up and enjoy it while, while you have it in front of you. And so I really wish they would do something for Nintendo Power. Um, and I'm sure there's people out there that have done this type of stuff, right? Third party, like your, your Rigsby's and, and Hupkeys that have done this. But if you had like Nintendo said, Hey, we're going to release all the Nintendo powers in a compendium of some sort, right? Like multi-series compendiums. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty cool. Um, official PlayStation magazine. That'd be cool. Like game informer, the Xbox magazines, like all of those, like into some sort of coffee table style book would be pretty cool. So yeah, I really I, hope I like the success of, of this Kickstarter maybe shows those guys at Game Informer or I guess GameStop. Now the Game Informer is dead. You know, hey, maybe you maybe you're not going to bring this back as a revenue source, but maybe you can give it, you know, some kind of afterlife that it deserves for putting in all that time and being a part of everybody's lives. Yeah, exactly. And so you had noted here that as of today's recording, they're sitting at three hundred and fourteen thousand on that Kickstarter. Yeah, out of that 35,000 goal. So they smashed it. Uh, they broke like a, a whole bunch of their, you know, uh, extension goals. And they're probably going to try to come up with some more at this time. Because, you know, if you can keep giving more reasons and keep making cool stuff to go with it, you know, why not? You know, don't let it stop you. Yeah. Make, make the best product you can. And you've got all the support of these people behind you to get it out there. Yeah, exactly. So short article, short and sweet. But I thought it was pretty cool. Something to reference here. And, um, you know, if you're interested in that, go ahead and back it. I think it's still still up. It should. I think they're normally like, what, 30 days for a Kickstarter. 
generally, maybe a little longer. Yeah, I believe something like that. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, um, this week I sent John a bunch of articles. I was reading a whole bunch of interesting things this week, and I was like, you know, I'll just send these to John. I don't know if he has read any of these. We won't go over all these. Uh, but this was one that stuck out that I thought was pretty good. This is by Jack Schickler at Euro News. Um, the article, EU Court Upholds Right to Sell PlayStation Add-ons in Loss for Sony. So Sony tried taking a UK company, Daedal, to court over an infinite boost mod that they released uh, for one of Sony's racing games. and. This was not something Sony wanted to happen. They were like, you know what? No, this is infringing on our copyright. And, you know, we have protections against this and you're not allowed to do this. Well, judges in the UK said otherwise. And I love exactly what he compared it to and how much sense it made. Because basically he was saying that, you know, he's not they're not making anything that's changing the source code. They're interacting it with it while it's in, you know, current memory in the system. They're not making any changes and it's not up to you, the creator of this to dictate its use. Once it's out there, you know, you don't have that much control over it. And so he said, um, the author of a detective novel cannot prevent the reader from skipping to the end of the novel to find out who the killer is, even if that would spoil the pleasure of reading and ruin the author's efforts to maintain suspense. Uh, this was from Subunar, who I guess uh, also found against Sony in this. So it is a good win for you know people out there who are modders and you know even those that are making some money off of their mods as well like to show that hey these big companies can't always just come in and bully you and um i guess the other article that i i really kind of wanted to bring up that this kind of reflects and it reminds me of too is that like steam made the announcement that they're going to stop using the term buy when you get games through steam it's going to say explicitly that you are only uh acquiring like a license to use this under the terms and as seen fit by like the company who made it so uh in these times where you know ownership is really you know in question not that it has ever actually really been ownership especially if it's digital you know this situation and that situation combined together to see, you know, at, at least there's kind of two sides to this and hopefully we can get some more protections built in to prevent them from just kind of steamrolling over us and, and dictating all the terms and uses for their products. Yeah. I mean, and what you had just mentioned too is steam and I think it was in California where that law kind of kicked mm -hmm. in first, right? That you have to specifically say it's a license support physical. I mean, you know, at any point, if you just got that license, that's all it is, right? You don't own the products. So, uh, yeah, but um, I'm looking at a text here that I'd gotten from somebody regarding uh, this court case and some other examples. So another one was uh, Galoob Toys versus Nintendo, uh, which tied in with the Game Genie. This was actually decided in 1992. Mm. And Nintendo lost that case, right? Very similar type of infringement yeah. type case, right? Um, and obviously I never had Loob Game Genie. I was Game Shark. Yeah, but obviously, and, you know, and then Daytel's been selling these things for decades, apparently, right? Like these types of mods. So you've got Game Shark, you've got Game Genie, all of these things that I think there's other things that have come out over the years, too, that have been sold to consumers to help cheat in products. So if Nintendo Code lost the battle... Or were those just books? Those are books, but... Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe they did have something, but I remember those. I do have one of those I'm somewhere around here. Actually, no, it's upstairs. I have to find it now. Now you got me happy. It's a code masters <laughs> for N64. Uh, and I do have one for PS2, I think, if I recall. Okay. Uh, so if Nintendo lost a kind of similar case in 92, why would Sony think, okay, let's try this again now? Like that, that doesn't make sense to me. So I think really what it kind of comes down to, and I know what you're going to respond with here, but if you have these companies that are actively making mods, you have free mods out there. You have a pay for mod in this instance. Um, why are why are Sony chasing, right? Like, why not collaborate? 
like if you're not acquiring the company to maybe wipe them away, right? So you don't have to worry about this. Why not collaborate in some way with these companies? You know, kind of work side by side to create cheats with them and and make these things fun for gamers. Like I I loved yeah. doing Game Shark and uh, when I was a kid and and you know all the weird things of Game Genie on Game Boy games. Like that was a great time, dude. Like, or even just like codes. Why don't they just yeah. have like codes anymore? I want a big head mode. Yeah, and like I don't know, go to Daytel and say like, hey, um, go ahead and make this for us. We'll collab. You'll get whatever percentage of like what's sold and if you want to do it as dlc like okay here's dlc of codes or just integrate codes into games again um when yeah. possible it's, that stuff's great dude i always i miss that in modern games so it's always fun to go into older games and you know like star starcraft is one like black sheep wall i think where you like mm -hmm. can open up everything and see everything that's going on on like the single player mode. Like that type of stuff is always enjoyable as long as it doesn't infringe on somebody else's enjoyment of the game, which would typically be an online multiplayer. Let's have some fun. Like bring that yeah, back. That's what he said in the article to the judge saying, you know, this is a victimless crime to cheat your own experience in a single player game. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's still your enjoyment. You've still purchased the game or licensed it, I guess. Have fun with it, right? Like that's what these companies should be doing rather than chasing folks in court. So stupid. So I guess the title of our episode will be Sony Loses Lawsuit. That's uh, what we'll have to put up this week. Sony takes the L. Yeah, Sony takes an L. All right. Let's go into our inflation deflation for the week. So we played some Dig Dug 2 Trouble in Paradise on the NES. I did not realize, by the way, that this was Dig Dug 2 until you popped it up. I just thought yeah. it was like Dig Dug Trouble in Paradise. Same. It was some random game. Yeah. Um, so it's been sitting on my shelf for years and I had never messed with it, but it was developed by Namco, published by Namco, released in March of 1985. It's an action game, apparently, which I don't know how to constitute action, but it is. And uh, overall reception had some mild success, but uh, not a lot of people were fond of it. So I assume that means that there's not a lot of like five out of 10 or seven out of 10 reviews. It's more so general reception. Yeah, there's just like a couple of reviews listed like Nintendo Life gave it a six out of 10. Family Computer gave it an 18 out of 30. <laughs> and all game gave it a two out of five so it's a pretty middling spread but like uh, when i was trying to look up reviews and stuff i read you know headline for like uh reddit thread like can we all just agree that dig dug 2 is not that good of a game so i, I just think that this is one that's been kind of like soured um and it's one that's not i guess as widely available like i was trying to look up where you can get it um we'll get into that i guess a little bit more but yeah just not not the most well received uh in the game i'll go over a little synopsis you play as taizo hori didn't know your little dig dug guy had a character name but that's it but well, he makes uh, a this... brand of controls nowadays too like after <laughs> the hori after years after years of digging holes and cracking fault lines he started developing controllers for the general consumer <laughs> so uh in this uh arcade score chasing sequel to dig dug you use your trusty air pump to inflate enemies and your jackhammer to crack fault lines and sink the land with enemies along for the ride uh this is a stage based uh progression you know try to get through as many stages as you can to get a high score start off with four lives and uh just go out at it one level at a time i've never played much regular dig dug um so i wasn't exactly sure what, what to expect with this sequel but yeah. it was pretty frantic i actually had a good time i did probably like did seven too. or eight runs i couldn't get past level 10 but it was it was very interesting. So in this uh, game, every map, you know, randomly, or I guess they're not randomly generated because they're sequential, but uh, yeah. you have a mass of land. Uh, you have enemies on the land. You're running around as your little guy. And there's these certain points where there are going to be like, they almost look like kind of like holes or little pegs in the ground. And you can stop on those spots pull out your jackhammer and you can drill a fault line and if that connects to another fault line it will sink all of the land in that area i think it has to be like 
it sinks the smaller of the land masses i think mm -hmm. I, i'm not exactly sure what determines it but um like in the first level you could basically just do one drill to the right you'll sink everybody in one shot um yeah. and as you're and trying you, to and you could sling out your pump obviously yeah. it, it's almost like a scorpion get over here situation <laughs> and you just like pump up the enemy to like pop to like pop and that's like classic dig dug so uh as the enemies like speed up you're trying to frantically like run away from them you're trying to strategically like drill off sections of the land to get like multiple kills at once uh but i found myself during a lot of the middle levels just kind of like lining up and waiting to just pump the enemies one at a time because you can drill these fault lines and the enemies won't walk over them yeah. they'll have to kind of walk around them or sometimes they'll go into an animation where they kind of like become a different sprite for a moment and kind of float over the line uh but you could kind of in a lot of levels just have a line and just walk on either side of it yourself and the enemies will have to try to like circle around uh but when you get a bunch of enemies coming after you and they start going a little bit faster, it is like impossible to get away. You feel like Pac-Man all of a sudden just getting swarmed yeah. on. I And you can actually, as you're using a jackhammer, you can move with it. So like yeah. if you're pressing it down and holding, you can continue going with it on the fault lines. I had a good time with this game, man. Like I don't see why anybody would be, you know, not happy about playing it. I, I can, I guess if you're like a dig dug purist, if that's even a thing yes yeah like i like dig dug it's one of my favorite arcade games like anytime i hit up an arcade i play some dig dug so i've always enjoyed it i didn't realize that this was out there and i almost like it as much if not more uh than the original dig dug it's just got so much going for it like yeah you got the fault lines and stuff and all these enemies going crazy but you know it's let me try and quickly pump up this enemy and get rid of it. Let me, you know, run away. Let me crack certain fault lines or you do have to have an understanding and memory of like, okay, cool. Like if I do hit this section for a fault line, this area will disappear. You know, next time I get to this part of a game, if I lose my four lives. So I thought it was a good time. I thought it controlled really well. I thought the music was fine. The graphics look great for a, a game from 1985. It was solid. I, yeah, I really did think this was a good game. So I would put it if I were, you know, reviewing on like a scale out of 10, I'd give it like maybe a seven or an eight. Personally, I thought it was fun. Okay. Yeah, it's totally yeah. worth it. Well, as far as the money goes, uh, complete in box, that'll run you forty four seventy four. Uh, that peaked at sixty two eighty six back in June of twenty twenty four. Currently, that price is trending down. Meanwhile, a loose copy will run you twelve sixty one. That peaked at fourteen dollars back in June of twenty twenty two, and that is currently trending up. You can find this digitally on Nintendo and Sony uh, for seven ninety nine, but I did not see it available on Microsoft. Or so, Steam. I am in a camp of this game is deflated i would if i saw this for 15 dollars, i would absolutely pick this up after playing what i played i would totally pick this up for 15 bucks and i would see that to be of value yeah um i mean considering it hasn't even peaked at 15 dollars before i'm going to say that that might be a little bit inflated i would say that um the original 14 from 2022 yeah i mean it, i it if it's never sold for 15, why would you have to pay 15? I mean, I'm nice, pristine, minty copy, solid looking label. I mean, there's a number of factors, right? If you had a maybe you're at a game expo. Yeah, and there's a and little bit of a markup. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, totally, totally worth it, man. Now, if of course, if it's like a ratty label, it's got like some sun damage on the actual uh, outside of a case or plastic. Then, yeah, you, you kind of look at it and say, all right, we got to. We got to talk I'll down it $10 just here, right, maybe. Yeah. Well, because like, obviously, like you'll always pay more for a better copy. But like, if you just found an average copy, 12 bucks is a fair price. Hmm. You're, you're definitely getting your money's worth for that. I mean, 15 regardless, as long as it looks good, dude. OK, so you're going deflated all the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll go with deflated. All right. Yeah. Yeah, the law of averages you gotta go deflate if you're saying one person just right yeah 
All right, cool. Uh, so the next game we're playing is Legacy of Kane. Um, mm -hmm. Soul Reaver. Is it Soul Reaver? Yeah, for PS1, right? No, not that I remember. Or, PS2? Soul mm -hmm. or was it Legacy of Kane? Blood Omen. Blood. Hold on. No, Blood Omen is on PS2. We don't even know what we're playing. Um, it is just straight up. Oh, it is Blood Omen. Okay, so it's Blood, Blood Omen, Omen Legacy, Legacy of Kane. Kane yeah. For PlayStation. yeah, there you go. So that's next week. Yeah, we just have the game set aside. I do have Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2, Legacy of Kane on PS2. Like, I've got a whole slew of these games. So if we enjoy this one, maybe we can look towards playing some more. Well, they'll the be doing that remaster, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I, I don't remember when it's supposed to come out, but I did hear about Sometime that. Sometime next year, probably. Yeah, or five years from now. Yeah, you, know, you know, it goes in the gaming industry. They'll lay off a bunch of people. You know. Well, it's not going to be that kind of remaster. It's just like a little toned up. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, it it's not like a whole big production thing now. Oh, gotcha. All right. I mean, it well. still probably took a lot of people a lot of hard effort. I'm not trying to diminish that. But yeah, it's not it's not Final Fantasy Rebirth or anything like that. Gotcha. OK, or like Shadow of the Colossus PS4. No, I don't think so. Mm. Which that one is still that one bugs me a little bit. The controls or not the controls with the camera angles. That one still bugs me. So good looking game, though. All right. Well, until then, we'll uh, play Legacy of Kane next week. You can, of course, check out what we're playing after Legacy of Kane on our Instagram and other social media pages. I got an image with all three of those games, including this week's game uh, post up there. Uh, but this has been episode 310 of the Game of Players podcast. My name is John. I'm Ryan. And thanks for listening.